<laughs> Hi everyone, it's Nathan here at Naditech Studio. Welcome back. So today we are going to look at complex modeling in ARCHICAD. So we're going to try out something a little bit challenging for us. And that will be creating this canopy. It looks beautiful really. And we're going to see how to actually achieve this kind of look within ARCHICAD. And majorly we're going to be using a shell tool that is actually good in making some of these shapes. So let's go ahead into ARCHICAD and let's start the process of modeling this thing. So first of all, I want to demarcate the area within which I'm going to work. And with the in document, I'm going to pick a circle and make myself a 30 diameter space to work in. So I'm going to make a radius of 15 meters. Okay, so let's have this somewhere here. So the whole entire shape should be in this area. We need a shape that's going to demarcate what it would look like. It's not a perfect circle in uh, the way it is being created. So if I go back to the reference and from above, we have a flat edge, a flat edge and a flat edge. So I'm going to try and create an equilateral triangle which we are going to use in order to cut out that shape from the from the shell. And by the way, if you're interested in these reference images, I've attached them in the description below. Go ahead and download them so you can be able to follow along just fine. So we're going to create that equilateral triangle. So I'm going to pick a polyline and draw a 30 by 30 triangle. So 30 by 30. Of course, this is not a triangle, but a square. So we want to transform it into a triangle by using a circle. So I'll make an arc here and an arc here. And now with this polygon selected, I'm going to get this node and move it here and here. And right now I have myself an equilateral triangle. If I measure by pressing M from this node to this, this is obviously 30 and this one 30. And as well, this one should be 30. And when I click on any of these nodes, I should be able to fillet those areas because we do not have sharp corners in the, in the reference image. So we want to make this 5 meters. Yes, make sure that you have uh, 5 meters and apply it to all corners. And this is the shape that I'm going for. So let me move this shape back to where I need it. So I'm hovering over here the circle to get this center line and just move this to align it somewhere here. Great. So I'm going to move it within here. And of course, we need to make the first shape, which is this <clears throat> rim kind of thing going on. So in order to do that, I'm going to make a copy of this and offset it by about, let's say offset all edges by three meters. Maybe that's a little bit big, maybe two meters. So I'm going to remove a meter. So we have a rim of about two meters. So I'll go ahead and position it within somewhere here, I guess. Yeah, I think that will do for us. And now let's go ahead and uh, create our first shape, which is the using the shell tool. So let's go under design, pick a shell. And we want to make that shell a dome shell, uh, which is this second option right here. And we change the material to timber. So I'm going to change it into a simple one instead of this complex, instead of this composite material, I'm going to make it a shell here so i'm going to make it timber structural great and of course changing it to a simple element allows us to control how thick it's going to be so i'm going to make it a little thicker than the 300 so i'm going to make it like i don't know 450 we can always come back and change that so let's get here on the center and make this a diameter of i'm holding down shift to keep it horizontal such that i can make a diameter of 15 meters so i'm double clicking and there we have it this is our first shape but of course this is nothing like what we need it to be because we we need a subtle arc over circle and in order to achieve it we might want to do that in section 
So on the ground floor, I'm going to look for a section by under here in viewports. I pick a section tool and just make sure to draw it along this blue line because it's an editing line. So you'll see in a moment why that's important. So I'm going to draw my section by deselecting everything first. And let's make a section and extend it further as well to cover the entire shape. And I'm going to open in with current view settings in order to have it here. So this is our first shape that we want to modify. So I'm going to go back here in document and pick a circle. And you can see that our first shape is 15 millimeter diameter. But we need a subtle shape, which I'm going to make by using a larger radius of about 40 meters, 40 meters. And of course, I need to move this down until it touches this area here. And in order to be precise, I think I may need a guideline for that. So I'm going to make a vertical line which is kind of uh, not easy to do nowadays because uh, Ahikad is no longer snapping 90 degrees that fast. So I will move it down to this node right here and I will try and it's now time to move this down. So let me make this red so you can see it. So you can see that this is what I'm trying to achieve. So this blue line is what we are interested in. So if you never cut through the blue line, you would not see this. So this is what you actually need in order to move this node and move it down here to somewhere here. And as well, change the curve curvature here by adjusting the radius. And you can see because of the reference line, we have 40 millimeters, 40 meters radius there and once we go to 3d you can see that now we have a photo curve going on here so how do we transform it into something like this it's actually pretty easy in just two simple steps we can do that because we already have the references here so have that shell selected which is not actually easy to do so you want to hold down shift and then tap tab such that you can be able to see it because you already have a circle there so in order to select the next shape you hold you tap tab and you're able to select it so right click and say define shell contour so if you click this and hold down the space bar and click on this shape now you can see that a shape has been drawn across so if we go 3d you can see that now we have ourselves a unique shape. Pretty awesome, right? Then the second step is to remove this space which is in between here. So with the shell selected, we can right click, say create hole in shell and hold down spacebar and click. And now you can see that we have created a hole in there. And when we go to 3D, you can see that we have ourselves this kind of rim thing going all around which is similar to what we already have here. Pretty cool. So now we go to the step further where we create these kind of, uh, I don't know, are they rafters? Are they palins? These things that cut across. So let's head over here in Archicad, create a copy of this, and then we use it to in order to slice it into those shapes. Pretty cool. So we are going to have this shape selected, Ctrl Shift D in order to make a copy of it. And now we click on one of these nodes to select that shape and delete it because we need that shape in there. So of course we need to select it again now, which is not pretty easy. Remember, hold down shift and tap tab to have it selected. So now we have this shape which is selected and we want to reduce it such that it fits in the hole itself. So I'm going to click on the edge and offset all edges, of course and have it in here. Okay, and you can see we get a warning that it has been created on a different story, which means that it is going to go to the first floor. So you can see it disappears here and we should expect to see it on the first floor right here. So we have this shape and then we have the one in with within. 
and in 3d in order to show you what i'm talking about we have this shape which is here and as well we have the shape which is in there great so now we want to slice that shape within into rafters yeah so we have to do it on the first floor because that's where it is now so let's create uh, a rafter there so if we wanted to create a rafter let me use just a polyline in order to create one shape and in order to see the center line i think i may need to enable trace reference such that i'm able to see this circle and now the center is somewhere here so let me create this shape um i don't know this thickness of that rafter should be around 200 i guess and let's move it in here and you know what i think we need to have it in the middle so i'm going to move it by 100 such that the center line is in the middle yes yeah, something like that and let's expand it using just offset one edge and we should be able to have something like this and then of course we need to multiply it in order to to have it in multiple places so let me move this kind of place to there and i'm going to make a copy of it ctrl shift d and looking at the reference i think this should be around 1.2 meters i'm going to choose 1.2 meters so i'm going to say 1.2 and this is what you get but we do not need this these rafters instead we are interested in the space which is created by the rafters so i'm going to go ahead and create the shape which is in between so i'm gonna go ahead and create a shape which sits within here great once it's created i just need to delete these rafters because what i'm interested in is this shape here which is the what is left when we get the rafters or the aliens so control u to multiply that and i will spread it by 1.2 plus the thickness of the rafter itself which is 1.4 like so and there you have it so we have them this side and of course we need to mirror them to also appear the other side from the center of course so hovering over here we can see the center and ctrl shift m and now i have them across this side pretty cool now we need to be able to subtract those polygons from this shape so i'm going to have this selected and now i start to subtract those shapes so right click create hole in shell and hold down space bar to click on any of the shapes and you can see that now we have that subtracted from this thing so again right click create hole in shell hold down space bar and click on any of the shapes and you can see that it has been removed so i'll continue to do that for the rest of these things so that i do not bore you all day with the same process we have ourselves a pretty awesome shape awesome right so now of course we need to do the patterns <laughs> i don't know whichever the, the ones that cut on the opposite direction which we can see on this image you can see those that run across same procedure that we're going to use so we're going to have this selected make a copy of it ctrl shift d and once we have a copy of this we're going to select this shape which is in between here and delete it such that now we have this entire shape which we can reduce such that it fits within the hole that we created and once it's here now we can rotate these guidelines such that we create simple squares in there that are going to help so ctrl e to rotate i'm going to rotate it from the center of this shape so I'll go ahead and make a 90 here great and now we have ourselves a reference 
that's going to use to create those ones so with the right shape selected remember to hold down tab such that you can be able to select the right shape which i believe is this one and uh, let's go ahead and subtract from the shape so right click create hole in shell and click on this right click create hole in shell space click here and so on and so forth and in a few more steps now we have ourselves this shape and of course because of the materials you can see we have this flickering thing going on especially in these places where they meet if you're able to see that so of course what that means is that we need to have this a bit of set from this area if i see here in the reference you can see these are a bit smaller so we just need to make this a little smaller and the depth of them i'm going to make them like 300 and of course as well where they start from 2.7 is uh, the default so i'm going to take them down a bit 650 such that they go down a bit and then as well if we go down we have some space left awesome right cool so now the main part of this shape has been created so let's head over and create some glass on top of this thing so how do we create that uh, floating glass same procedure we need to make a copy of this shell so we have it selected and ctrl shift d to create a copy and of course we need to get rid of that space which is in between so clicking on any of those nodes we have that selected we delete it and of course we have it selected and change its material to glass and of course we need to elevate it we need to make it thinner because it's glass about 50 millimeters thick is what i'm going with and i'm going to elevate it higher such that it's not in the same height and i will go with 2.9 i guess and that should be of course looking at the section which is a much better representation yes floating in the air good for us and then we have next we need to create these ribs that hold the glass together because we are not going to create one big glass like this but it's going to be in ribs okay so those ribs of metal uh we're going to create them with the same shape so let's make a copy of this glass shape and we make it thicker because it's a rib so let's make it about 100 thick and let's make it um iron as a metal and of course it can start in the same height let's add like a 50 such that we have a 50 up and a 50 below and i don't know that means that it should be 150 because we have 50 up 50 for the glass and 50 below yeah 150 is good as the thickness of that metal and of course right now it doesn't make sense because we need to chop off those things so right click create hole in shell and remove this area remove this one and if you ever run into this issue or where it removes more than is necessary and that's because you have clicked on the same shape twice so you want to undo that and do the process again create hole in shell and space click on the right shape so now it creates for you the thing much better so let me first investigate just these few shapes and see what they look like here in 3d before i proceed and now that i look at it i think this is a big kind of a very big metal maybe i need to reduce it so i will undo that and uh, make a a thinner metal and you know what i have a something that's gonna do this faster so let's undo those few iterations we have made 
and I just need to make this reference a little bigger. So let's make it bigger, like by, I don't know, 50 millimeters. So yeah, so I think I have to do away with this, with these and multiply this by the 1.4, great. And now we should be having a smaller, a smaller gap left, which is about 100, which is good for metal. It will work really. And of course, with the right shape selected, we want to right click, create hole in shell, space click, do that again and again and again. Just like that, we have ourselves nice ribs that are running and protecting our glass. Looking at the reference, we have ourselves this cantilever on the glass. So I might want to cantilever it just a little bit. So here on the floor plan, I'd have my glass selected and can't leave it just a tiny bit i don't know by i don't know 300 400 whatever it should be able to look pretty cool and of course this thing is not going to be floating in the air so now we want to create these stands that uh this mesh this is on which needs us to have a tapering column like this and a tapering column here which is pretty easy to do here in akikad uh, because if you have akikad version 23 and above you should be able to do this because i believe the column tool was made in order to be able to create tapered columns so with it selected we want it to be steel structural and then we want it to be tapered so with it selected here we can change from uniform to tapered so on top what is it gonna be i don't know i think it should be way too big because if i look here these are massive columns so i'll go ahead and make it uh let's start from 500 by i don't know 800 so so let's make double them at the bottom. So let's make them uh, one meter, of course, and 1.6. Yes, great. And that is a column that I would like to place here. But then, of course, it's it's also at, ang at an angle. So I'm going to choose a slant. I'm going to choose, like, I don't know, 50, plus 50 degrees. And that looks cool let's see what that looks like here in 3d it looks cool but it's slanting on the wrong side uh, that i never wanted it to slant so perhaps i may need to flip my dimensions here to have the 800 come here and the 500 here the 1.6 above and the one meter on this other side so we have a much slimmer thing going on here and of course i need to start to place it uh, using the ground floor so i'd imagine it to be in a place like here great And of course, I need a copy of this, Ctrl Shift M to mirror it along its axis here. So we have one going there. And of course, this needs to be taller. And of course, I need like, I don't know, a 
slab in this place uh, such that it's a uh, upon which we are going to bolt these things maybe it's a concrete slab so with the slab tool make it a simple slab make it i don't know thicker and uh, make it some concrete perhaps uh, and there you are maybe it's concrete maybe it's it's finished with a metal plate whatever so let me just make it steel structure so it looks like that other stuff and now i can group these elements and mirror them across the entire thing Ctrl Shift M, mirror from the center. Ctrl Shift E, rotate. So that's that's been it. If you're interested in this file, I'm going to leave a link below. You can go ahead and download it. And while there, a token of appreciation is much appreciated. Thanks so much for watching and. I will see you next time.